Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're in a new game. This is called Medieval Dynasty. And what I plan to do is give you 20 tips for beginners. We're going to go over some of the stuff that I wish I knew when I first started playing so that it can make your introduction to the game much quicker and smoother. Let's get started. Tip 1. If you go escape and go to customize game, you'll see you can change lots of aspects of the game to make it easier. Now I've watched a few videos and people have changed these automatically and then given tips. I'm not doing that. This is purely vanilla. This is how the game was designed to be played in the first instance. So I'm not doing any of that, but if you do fancy doing that, this inbuilt cheat is there for you. So that's tip one. Tip two, build yourself a simple house. To build, you have to press Q. It gives you a selection of radial menus. One of these is buildings. Houses is in the bottom left hand corner. You can select simple small house. Okay. Now you live in this to begin with. You can have villagers join you and they can live in these small simple houses as well. But tip two really is about building this house next to one of the settlements. If you press M, go to the map, you'll see that I've built it near Gostovia. And there's a number of reasons for that. The main one being I can go and sell my stuff, feathers and all that type of stuff down at Gustavia, as well as pick up missions and pay my taxes and not have to run or pay to go any great distance. Tip three. Once you've built your house, you've got a base where you can store stuff, head out and explore the map. The one main reason for this is because there is a certain amount of loot littering different junctions as you explore the roads. See these wagons? Well, they have been lost or attacked or tumbled over and been left there and they will often have goods lying around it. So see here there's a torch. But usually there's at least three items and it can include all sorts of things from crossbows to wine to torches to clay, to iron ore, all sorts of things can be found on these and they're littered around the map generally at junctions and you can see here I'm at this junction just down from my settlement and they are really good there's planks as well there and you can loot these and you can either use the items you find if you find say some some bronze tools they, they last a long time or you can sell it at the village and make some money Tip 4. You don't have to rush this game. It takes time. Immerse yourself in the environment. I found that element of it really enjoyable. And you're given quests, chapters that you complete and are, you get rewards for doing so. And it opens up extra building slots and you gradually build gain experience and you gain experience for everything that you do so take your time don't feel like you have to rush it don't be tempted by those cheat settings that we talked about earlier on tip five one of the best early resources you can gather is feathers what you need is a knife you can you can uh, craft with stones and sticks and then when you shoot these birds, it can be crows or hawks, you gather the meat and the feathers. Now, with that particular bird, I gathered 24 feathers, which is not a bad not a bad situation. Of course, if you get too close, they fly off. Now, feathers you can sell for a good amount of coin back at the village. So they are a good early resource to, you know, to earn a decent amount of money and as you wander around the map you'll see birds on the roads if you shoot them gather the meat and the feathers then you go back and it's actually a really good way of making some money tip six medieval dynasty is split up into seasons spring summer autumn winter naturally and every season there are different products available within the wilderness you need to be aware of say for example Certain mushrooms grow at particular times of the year. Or, you can see there, or berries 
if we gather some berries here unripe berries it's spring they haven't come to fruition yet so they aren't edible so you want to be aware of this so that you know when you need to gather certain resources or if you want to head out and gather yourselves loads of mushrooms autumn would be a good time to do that because that's when many of the mushrooms are around but if you want to gather dandelions spring or summer may be a better time to do that tip seven when you're crafting at fireplace or wherever you're crafting if you click on the item say the cauldron there and then select one of the radial menus as you hold the selection tool on the one you want you can press R to craft more now and I know it says it in the middle but it's not immediately obvious it takes it's much easier if you can select the amount that you want to do so I'm going to do 13 stew here so it will then proceed to craft them without you having to click it each time so holding that R is a nifty little tool and it's not something you notice straight away necessarily tip 8 in every village there are tradespeople now you can tell a tradesperson because next to their name they have a little bag symbol and then next to the bag symbol they have a smaller symbol which indicates the type of product they sell and here there's a little beer tankard so she's obviously uh, works How behind a bar you? and when you click on them you can select show me your wares, wares never disappoint. and their wares never disappoint and you can sell all your, your stuff to the person now you get the same rates whatever uh, tradesperson you go to so for example I'm going to sell the feathers here there's a lot of feathers 157 feathers are going to make 235.5 coins that goes on to the coin selection down here on the left and this is how you sell products now the reason why you're looking for the symbols is because sometimes they sell different things so they may sell farming stuff or luxury goods and so you've got to keep an idea most villages will usually have the same types of um, traders so you can go to different areas different villages and, and meet different traders in those locations where you know you can get certain types of goods from tip nine every year in spring you need to pay your taxes head to the local village where hopefully you've set up a your own village nearby and you go to Unigost now to find out exactly how many how much taxes you need to pay click on escape click on tab sorry and you go to journal at the top here click on there and it says side quests pay taxes click on there and it says the quest will expire soon I have to pay taxes and there might be trouble okay so the local authorities are going to get involved if you don't pay your taxes and objectives down the bottom here says deliver to Unigos coin times 864.7 I have 964.1 so I've got enough to pay him so when I click on him and talk to him he says hello did you come here to pay your taxes yes here you go that should cover everything click on it end di dialogue splendid he says and then you get the fanfare pay taxes quest is completed excellent another year uh, you'll be paying taxes next spring now the amount of taxes you pay is based upon how many buildings you have and how advanced in the game you become so that sounds like a lot of money in the beginning but it will be a smaller amount in your first time you have to pay it. and in fact it will the quests the chapters that you have will have an episode where it teaches you about paying taxes tip 10 the map is quite big you can roam around there's lots of roads lots of towns now outside each town is one of these guys Wagoner you see standing next to his horse and cart now if you click on him he can give you a ride anywhere around the map look at that but it's expensive and you know unless it's the middle of the night and there's lots of wolves nearby quite a waste of money 
unless you're loaded. So especially in the early game, using the Wagoner is always an expensive thing to do. But tip 11. As you travel around the map, you'll see bridges like these. There's a river that runs through the middle and up to the north there. Sometimes next to bridges you'll find barrels as if they would just been washed up on this area here or just discarded. Now usually there's two. You can click F, open them and there'll be loot inside. Now that is usually some sort of kind of seed or grain which is really vital for your farming. So you, you can grow orchards and crops and in these you will get yourself some vital seeds such as plum tree seedlings. So there, keep an eye out for those as you're traveling around and you see bridges, just check next to them. Tip 12. If you look at the screen at the top, there's a little semi-circle of green with a tree in the middle. That shows me that the season is coming to an end. And you can see it's the little arrow has gone all the way around to the right. Now, when I sleep now, it will take me into the next season, which happens to be summer. And you can see on the bottom left-hand corner here, my food levels are really low. Now, if I sleep to the end of the season, but once you have slept through your season, you'll see that all your bar, your health, your stamina, your food, and your thirst have all gone back up to full again. So if you time it right, you could do it so that if if you don't want to waste any food, say for example, and rather sell it at the market, you can sleep through the season and it will boost all your um, stats up to their, their full capacity. Tip 13. In the early game, wooden spears are vital. You can craft them by gathering logs through chopping trees down and then you craft them in your radial menu and they spring into your inventory and if you go to your inventory you can then drag them across to a quick slot just click on and click and hold and drag it across I I have one in three so pull it out now if you hold the right mouse button down and then throw it there is a slight there's a drop as you do it as you can see there but these spring back into your hand it takes very little to draw it back it takes a second and then to throw it is just to click the mouse button and you can see here you can throw it and attack now I recommend having if you're going out and about having maybe six spears in your backpack so you can hunt down these little rabbits or if you're attacked by some thugs if you roam too close to their camp you can defend yourself by throwing spears at them. They are a very handy thing to have. Tip 14. Every so often you will get uh, skill points pop up and there's if you click on the skill tab, if you escaped go to the skills tab you'll see there's a range of different types of skills. Farming, diplomacy, survival, production. Now when this comes up it will show you on the right hand side that there's a number of points you can put into that particular resource but this tip tip 14 is that when you're gathering stuff you gain survival points now the best skill you can get is the survival sense that is really important that's the first thing you should get now the reason for this is it shows you how to see stuff within the environment so if we go back into the world if I hold down the left alt key you'll see because of my survival skill I can see all the things that can be gathered like this you see it does use your stamina but one of the things that's really useful is it shows you objects that you've dropped so here I can see some wooden spears that I previously threw. You can go and pick it up there like that. There's another one over there as well. Another one over there. That's really handy because when you're using your spears I was just talking about, 
you're often running and throwing at a deer or a cat and you run past it and it's gone the spear is embedded in the ground somewhere although they only last four throws and then they break but get that survival sense it's so important so useful in game survival sense make that a priority tip 15 one of the best early game resources a deer they provide you with meat and leather good tip is if you can get two spear hits in early then it's usually pretty badly injured you can see I'm gather I'm, I'm gaining on it here that is because it's taken so much damage and it, then it's much easier then to hunt it down you can pull your axe out run up to it and give it a bit of a give it a whack there you go so if you can get close enough to put two spears in it will slow down enough for you to catch up on it and then you can do the foul deed but it's a case of survival tip 16 what you might not realize is when you're holding the wooden hammer you can build structures true but if you click the right mouse button it brings up another radial menu and one of those is repair if you click on that it shows you the condition of all your buildings now all mine are fine but if they're damaged they'll have they'll show in red in which case you'll need some resources and you'll need to go up to them and hammer them again to repair them tip 17 Traps are a handy little thing to have early game. First you get the rabbit trap. You can see here we've got a rabbit in this trap. We're going to arm it. And then because you can see there's a percentage next to the rabbit trap name there. That means that it's gradually deteriorating. You have to make a new one when it runs out. You've got your bird trap. You've got to arm that as well. And then you've got your rat trap. These are the the first three traps you get in game and they will generate resources for you just got to keep remember to come back and take the meat out and I've got some meat and some fur there from those particular traps to, cr to actually build the trap you need to go to your radial menu there's furniture and decorations and then on the left hand side there's traps and then you can see the first three here tip 18 sometimes you'll need sticks it may be for structures or fences. I find gathering sticks can be a little bit of a pain. But the best way to do it is to find a, a clump of small bushes or trees like these. And then gather them that way. And you will gain sticks more quickly through doing this than actually going around the floor picking them up. Tip 19. You will need what they call rot to create fertilizer to grow crops you can see you've got some crops over here now rot comes from rotten meat you can see here things like berries don't turn into rot it needs to be something substantial and the quality of something will indicate whether it's, it's going off so if you look at something in your um, in your inventory you'll see condition now you, like weapons and tools also have condition but food will turn into rot and then you can use it to create fertilizer so you need 10 rot to create some fertilizer that you then spread on the ground and to do that I will often stash some meat away so I'll, I'll go out and I'll, I'll hunt loads of deer down, put the meat away, use some of it, and then I'll stash some meat so that over the seasons it goes off and then I will ultimately have some rot. Do not throw rot away. It's really valuable because fertilizer is expensive to buy. You can buy it down in the village, but just bear that in mind. Some meat going off is a good thing for your long-term prospects as you start to then develop your crops. Tip 20. This is a bit of a weird one. I don't quite know what to think about it. You could look at it as an exploit. But if you're encumbered, 
and you're running you'll see you're running slowly naturally if you press shift you'll sprint if you go sideways as well you go quicker now I don't know why this should be and it's probably something that will come out of the game at some point but at the moment it can be quite handy when you're running and you've got quite a distance to cover if you strive sideways go running at a diagonal an angle then you will go more quickly and that can be particularly helpful when trying to escape wolves that you've stumbled upon. Tip 21 and your bonus tip. Keep an eye out for boars. These little feisty sods can really cause a problem. They will attack if you get within a certain vicinity. Now if you then hit them a few times they will run off again. And they're good sources of meat and leather. But just bear that in mind, if you go near them they will attack and if your health is low it can be the end of your dynasty. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found these tips useful. If you did, click the thumbs up. If you're not subbed already, it would be awesome if you could. And I will be back very soon with some more content. Thanks again for watching.